Welcome to Nickel City Chronicles. Today, it's another collaboration with Nerdboy D from the Nerd Boys podcast. And our special guest today is Miles Carter, candidate for sheriff, Erie County Sheriff. And uh, thanks for coming on, man. Thanks for having me. Um, I like with this is my second time coming on here. Every time I feel like we're gonna have a great conversation, and I mean we got a lot to talk about today. Yep. Um, you know, from the election to um, you know another death at the holding center. Yep. Um, you know, and and just so you're aware, there's there's on average a, a death every six months at the holding center. So yeah. even with one being on Saturday, we're expected to have another one uh, before this election cycle is over too. All right. All right. And then also um, you know decriminalize uh, decriminalization of 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 uh, low level possession and all types of things. So, you know, there's a full agenda for us to talk about today. Yep, we're going to get into that Carter right now. Carter says right. he was peacefully protesting and giving an interview when police tackled him from behind. You know, I maintained a respectful distance. Um, and as a community, we're conducting a peaceful protest in which grievances were being aired against the Buffalo uh, Police Department. Since then, Carter has continued protesting, calling for change within the Buffalo Police Department. I've worked with the police officers before. I've tried to bring justice to our streets in different ways. I've asked for better streets. I've asked for better sidewalks. I've asked for better lighting in our communities. Those things haven't worked. On Wednesday afternoon, he led a rally in MLK Park, urging protesters to shift the focus off of what happened to him. I'm not really concerned about what happened in the past. What I'm, what I'm really concerned about is bringing justice to Deanna Davis today. Uh, we're asserting that what occurred was an accident, and we're demanding that she's released so that she can recuperate with her family until she has a fair day in court. Davis is currently at the Erie County... County uh, Democratic uh, Committee, and Jeremy Zellner is also the uh, the chairman of the Board of Elections. So yeah. he's he's got quite a bit of power with respect to like you know votes and and, and the political process here. Um, <clears throat> so the first thing is, is that uh, the 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 women that were propping Kim Beatty up and saying you know vote for Kim Beatty, they said that uh, Jeremy Zellner uh, sent a another politician to uh, to Kim Beatty and to and to them to offer her a, uh, a an appointment in in uh, uh brian gold's administration if she drops out of the race mm. right so that's a felony right <clears throat> you can't you can't do that um and so like that that's step one and then the the, the other part to it is is that uh throughout the process uh, uh, uh jeremy zellner uh uh was supposedly um telling kim <clears throat> that if if she wasn't selected throughout the endorsement process that she couldn't go on to primary or, 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 or essentially making her feel as if she couldn't go on a primary. Um, you know, and, and there's lots of reasons for it is like the sheriff is a countywide position. Um, for some reason, uh, the democratic committee thinks that black people can't win countywide seats. Right. Um, or at least that's the narrative that they like to construct and push oh, yeah. right to keep us from running from those seats. So if you look at like our, our, our elected countywide, uh, uh, seats, like there's no black people that hold those seats. Right. And it's not to say that, that black people can't hold those seats like black people make up. I think it's like 20 percent of, of the, the population of Erie County, 30 percent of the, the, the population of the city of Buffalo. A substantial amount. A substantial amount. Yeah. And, and I, I believe that there's enough non-racist people in Erie County to elect black people in positions. But I, I also believe that the Erie County Democratic Committee is constructing this narrative to kind of block people. Right. To actively block black people from going uh, uh, for these countywide seats. Um, and and that, that that to me is the. Uh, the structural racism that's kind of built here in, into our local political scene, and it's headed by Jeremy Zellner, right? So, like that that that's what um, what Kim Beatty was talking about, like or or those supporting Kim Beatty were talking about with her being muscled out of the race. So it's like almost in, uh, especially like in our city, Buffalo, New York, Erie County, surrounding areas. So it's, it's almost like it's a, a, a two party system with the Democrats. Bro, it, it's, it's I wouldn't even say it's a two party system with the Democrats. I just feel like they're just they're just the problem. Yeah. Like like the Democratic structure is the problem. And then you have a bunch of liberals um, that that believe they're doing the right thing by being Democrats that yep. are following that leadership. I was right. and I and Bernie Sanders said this before. I, a AOC said this before. I've, I've said it, too, is like uh, the party with super delegates that won the same party that, that wants to get rid of the Electoral College which is uses super delegates to choose their nominees. That's the, I mean, that's where the problem really is. Like we need to get out of that system mm -hmm. and re seriously re redo the, the whole way the left left wing politics, the, like, there needs to be a better party that represent left wing politics in America. The Democrat party just isn't, for me, just isn't doing it because it's really, it's, it's really, they talk a lot of good game. 
They talk. They, they tell you what you want to hear. <laughs> they talk. They try to pander to as many people as they possible. Some, some and then as soon as they get into office, they do the exact opposite. And they just become crony capitalists. Sheep yeah. in wolf's clothing. Right. Sheep in wolf's clothing. That, that's what Malcolm X The fox is the one who ends up with the lamb chop on his plate. The wolf doesn't act friendly. And therefore, the wolf has more difficulty in getting the lamb chop in his plate. I'd like to point out, though, that... I, I, I say that because it is usually the... If you study the structure of the Negro community, mm-hmm. economically, politically, civically, psychologically, and otherwise, it's controlled by the white liberal mm-hmm. who usually poses as the friend of the Negro, who actually differs from the white conservative in, in the same way that the fox differs from the wolf. Uh, their appetite is the same. Their motives are the same. It's only their mannerisms and, and methods that differ. Max was saying, right. Right, and, and then that, that's the issue um, with, with Democrats. And, and, and the thing is, is that they were smart enough to, to elect black people in certain offices to give you that facade as, as though that they were working, you know, on, on behalf of the oppressed. So-called uh, pro, uh, progressive. Right, progressive. And that's what people think is like, oh, we're electing black people to office. This is very progressive. No, black, black and progressive women, do not intersect yeah. all the time. Right. Oh, yeah. Right. Like we, we have a lot in common. Yeah. But a black person has to come out and say that they're progressive. And they have to support progressive policies in oh, order yeah. to be actually be progressive. Just it's electing a black like they, person is not progressive. Exactly. It's like almost like they just, uh, they put a band aid on it. Yeah. yeah, well, it's not even a band aid. It's it's a it's a mask. Yeah, like and then that's that's what we should have with Byron Brown and Byron Lockwood. It's like, oh, this is gonna be great for the black community, and it's like, no. when we need sidewalks a month before elections, <laughs> like, that, <laughs> that's when it's gonna great. pour some little little uh, rocks in there to make it look all right, yeah. and then it bounces all over the place as soon as you ride over it. Right? It's wow. like, <laughs> yeah, so it's like, and, and, yeah, I, and I noticed it too. Like, with, uh, even with uh, like a lot of a lot of judges and everything. It's like they want to show their face, and they then then they want to be pro black when they need them black votes, right? And it's just like, where the fuck were you for the past what four years? Yeah, yeah. you were elected in office last time after you after you mind fucked us. Yeah, that's just my my opinion. Well, so we, we I th- I think so. Okay, so sheriff's update election. Uh, the the Republicans have uh, consolidated their powers and and endorsed or nom yeah endorsed. Uh, uh, okay, Karen Healy case is okay. the Republican nominee. She's a former investigator for the uh, Buffalo Police Department. Hmm. Um, she's a failed candidate for the 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 the, uh, the, the Lancaster School Board. And this I is who they're picking to replace Howard. Yeah, yeah. So she Howard's was- not running. Right, Howard's not Howard's running. done. Howard's out. Just so and, and, and hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Howard's out. Right, okay, but that, that that's not out. a win. That's not a win, right? Because it's like he's just one person, that entire corrupt organization. Oh yeah, he's he's right. Just, so he's unless just you a, have somebody that's going to come in and swing that hammer and 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 get some real reform and some real changes done, yeah. we're still in the same exact position we were in before because it's the institution. Agreed. New face, same old. Right. So so we're we're okay. Howard's gone. He's a bad guy, and and he's done horrible things, and he should have been he should have been impeached. He's not gone yet, right? He should have been impeached. The legislator has enough to impeach him. Like somebody can remove this man from office. Wow. Right. He's failed to report rape he's failed to report uh um Hank, all types of assault stuff. yeah he, he hasn't done proper investigations on murder like his, everything about this man says why the hell has he been in office now for 16 years and nobody's done anything about that he's criminal he is criminal he can be removed from office yep and we haven't done it, but we have a legislator. We have legislators that will yell at him in a meeting. But that's the <laughs> thing is like, yo, y'all are always willing to be so ah, on the camera. But when it comes to actually that, getting the work done, yeah, when, like, they all go as soon as that camera turned off, they're probably like, sorry, you know, we had to do that, right? <laughs> right. Probably went out for right. Afterwards. That that's exactly what it is. Is because they play like it's a, like it's a corporation, like it's an office yeah. setting, like it's this, like we're all in a group together, and it's like no, trying to please everybody. And that that's exactly. And I, I said this before, like there, justice does not have all sides. Like there, there, no. there, there's you can't play all sides and, and, and end up at justice, right? right? Justice is a very specific answer. It has a calculation. Yes. Like they're like you know what justice is, and if right. if, if you're not delivering on that. As an elected official, I don't even think that you should be embraced by those that are also in office. Like you should be shunned out of the community if, if you're not doing your job, and you should be held accountable, right? If if you're not doing your job, and it's like, and and we have ways and means of, of holding these individuals accountable, and it's like we're failing even at that. Yeah. And this man is responsible for lives lost. Yep. And it's just like, it just makes me think like, either one, one or two things. One, you know, they all friends, which they're all benefiting. Yeah, they're all benefiting which is given and Yep. Or in the case of like, you know, Reverend Kwiatkowski, y'all heard that he had dirt on a lot of high ups. 
which is why he was allowed to retire and, and keep his pension and everything. So mm. you got people that are actually like, you know, scared to kind of do the right thing because the simple fact is everybody did their dirt. Right. So yeah. it's like, who's going to expose who? You, you screw me. I'm and it becomes, it becomes like the, the show um, House of Cards where it's yeah, like, this it whole, is. this game. And people think that's just a show and it's not real. That is show yes. is reality in so, politics not I'll, just in dc down to local levels where it's just yeah. a game people are playing characters just trying to win it's like it's like my brother uh he actually was the one that told me about house of cards and he he was like you know a lot of the shit that's that you see on tv going on in politics happened in that show yeah so it's like yeah those characters script, those characters usually the, the usually are uh, are symbol symbol symbolic for a, a real person yeah you know what i'm saying not saying who or what but i'm sure i'm sure it's multiple there's multiple layers there too it's a brilliant show, by the way. Oh, yeah. I I thoroughly enjoy the show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's actually really good. Yeah, say what you want about uh, what's it, whatever his name is that Kevin Spacey. Kevin Spacey, you know, whatever, whatever he did is whatever that was fucked up. He, he, it, I mean, it, it was it was bad. It was, it was bad. bad. But regardless, <laughs> bad. regardless, his acting was yeah, even with uh, we on point. Right. Thing. I was gonna say, are we supposed to cancel? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Cards. I don't is know. Is it still on Netflix? It's, it is on Netflix. Okay, I'm already finished with think, all the seasons. I think people realize that show's so good. It doesn't matter. They like, just left it alone. Even, though, even if the main character did some crazy shit, he's just one of the characters and out of again, out they, of the hundreds of people that worked in that. And, and like the director, you know, you know what it is. It was like, oh, he's an actor. It's okay. Yeah, he's. Yeah. A, yeah, he's like, <laughs> we're used to this. We're he's used to this. All that. He yeah, did it. yeah, they're used to that. It wasn't it? Wasn't his? Uh, it wasn't him. It was his character didn't do it. He did it. Right. And I think they killed him off anyway, or something like that. Yeah. So it was just yeah. Spoiler, spoiler. Sorry about that. Spoiler. For, sorry. <laughs> oh, he's dead. Yeah, he does die. Oh yeah, he is. He yeah, is dead. The last yeah, yeah. season. Yep. Uh, they, so, they switched it up. Yep. So yeah, it's just like one of those things where like you think like. uh Cause even like we we bought up our Kelly, like we can can't okay we could uh, can we actually cancel his music since his music has been so I say no I can't I still listen to R Kelly you listen I don't to a care lot of songs I don't even I don't songs. see to me music or any art form it, you, once you create it and put it out to the public it no longer really is yours anymore like maybe monetary wise you can yeah you can get paid for it it's your that's yours but our art becomes public it becomes if, if we're canceling like, r kelly we're gonna start canceling off all these artists everything. that were that were yeah. that were painting naked boys in in churches and that's what i'm saying yeah, like all oh, that needs to be canceled that's what i'm yeah good, <laughs> all no, that needs to be canceled 100%. No, that's art too exactly <laughs> exactly because the the r kelly songs still mean something to people who are who heard it when it came out and it and it affected their lives because they can relate to it or whatever the case may be. Yeah, that's and, all still real and all still there. And he's written so much music, like you know, between Michael Jackson's and just you could probably name any artist, and they probably have an R. Kelly uh, R. Kelly written song in their catalog. Right. right. Y'all can't get me caught up talking about cancel culture because then gonna, I'm gonna get canceled. Yeah. And, 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 <laughs> you can't get, no, I'm not gonna us. be sure. Don't cancel us. <laughs> Yo. Don't cancel us. It's like, oh no, he listens to R. Kelly. Hell no. I'm like, nope. That's We're not saying what he did was cool. It was not. <laughs> we don't like little girls around here. Whoa. All right. But you know what I was thinking age. though. You know what I was thinking though is like, um, you were giving your update on the situation that's going on with the election. Right. So the Republicans rolled out their candidate. It's what's her name? Karen Healy Case. Karen Healy Case. Okay, and they're they're kind of just going with the we're gonna you know what it, what what's their motto is like uh you know we need to we need to continue. What, I don't even know what what is she even running on. Just keep everything the same. She had said at one point that she wanted to continue the legacy of Sheriff Howard. <laughs> whatever, right. you, whatever, however and, you and think she, that And means. she's supposed to be a moderate Republican because she was a Democrat before she ran. Before That's she wild. ran. That's wild. So she's supposed to be a moderate Republican, yeah, that right? Make any and sense. she she is being primaried though. So there is a primary going in the Republicans, but they just they just consolidate and she got a unanim, unanimous endorsement. She's gonna win. We don't so want to elevate the other candidates on, anyway. On the other side though is you. Yeah. Miles is a dad. And you are going He's up. Against, to be a dad. And you're going up against Brian Gold. Brian Gold is, is okay. the man's name. All yeah. right. And um, Brian Gold, what's he like? What's what's he looking to do? 
nobody's yeah. announced anything. He's, I'm the only just, one that said I have a platform a for change. So we're supposed to vote for Kim Beatty because she's a black woman. We're supposed to vote for, for Karen Your Healy reaction was prices because, just... because she's an ex, you know, uh, Buffalo police officer. And again, she's a woman. We're supposed to vote for, uh, uh, for Brian gold because, uh, because he's got experience as a chief Dwaga police officer, but they've got a long so. track record of racism there. So basically here's so what, like, here's, you know, here's why I'm asking all these questions. Nobody, nobody has come forward with an actual platform for change. Right. Everyone's just running on who they are and saying, you should vote for me for that reason. And so the, the reason why the reason why I asked you all that is oh. was was for this reason alone. You have two options: the status quo, right? Miles Carter, that's right? It. And that that's really what it boils down to. And that that's what you see because it's like there there's there's three other serious candidates, or and 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 another candidate that that's primary. There's three other candidates, and then another candidate that's going to the primary. Those three candidates are police officers. This this other candidate all is, is no no police experience, right? So similar similar to me in that category, right? So, okay, I got you. That's so the uh, so these three, the uh, like they 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 all have long experience of being police officers, right? And they're saying, trust me. I'm a police officer. I've done this before. I'm going to be new leadership. Everything's going to change, right? They don't have a single platform item addressed or or issued. I don't even think Kim Beatty has an has has a website, right? And I've been on the other websites, and I'm telling you that they lack the information necessary to make an educated voting decision. I think you got a real chance. Everybody keeps saying that now. No, I think you do. I, believe it too. I appreciate that. And I think, but I but I think I think it's going to take say? everybody. I think it's going to take everybody to really to really not sit this one out and right. really, and really get involved and Cause what you get just out and vote. Said pretty much was, oh, I have the police experience. Trust me because I have the police experience. Miles Carter doesn't have police experience, so right. don't vote for him. But vote for one of us. Because but a sheriff is not a police job, and this is yeah. the thing that people don't that that people are, are are forgetting. The mayor controls the Buffalo Police Department. The mayor has no police experience. The sheriff is a policy making elected official. Say it again for the people in the back. The mayor, the the, the sheriff is a policy making elected official. Yeah. Right. The, the the sheriff is not a police officer. Yeah. When the sheriff takes office, he takes a forty hour training on how to be a sheriff. Wow. That's and, it. And you know what's crazy is like. The ways, even if, if let's let's play their game for a second. Let's say let's say you do want that they, they, they're looking for police experience, right? Well, what has police experience gotten us in this country, in this city, in the past 10, 20 years? Well, I can tell you why you wouldn't want a Buffalo police officer with police experience, that's and that's because at. they they've 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 got a murder solve rate of thirteen percent. That's what I'm getting. So at. now it's you like, now you want to promote just, that just to the, the executive newspaper. position? Read the newspaper. <laughs> right. People getting killed by police. People getting beat up to a right. pulp and getting th and dying in, in jail and, and holding centers people hanging themselves in holding centers police that's, officers lying that's and falsifying drug tests yeah that's what your police experience is giving you yeah. so if you want real change you I don't, don't want to look outside the box at somebody who's actually looking at this from a solution standpoint which i think is you yeah so so and but but that and then that's everybody keeps asking like you know what is your experience uh, to be sheriff what is your experience to be sheriff what is your experience to be sheriff um and the the thing is that we we have um we have town justices um you know and a town justice is a judge right so you look at your town of amherst your town of chitawaga your town of tonawanda the, these justices are not required to have law degrees oh nice right and but they're endorsed by democrat and republican parties Right, so the the Democrats endorse them, the Republicans endorse them for their seats, but they don't hold the the law degrees to sit as a judge. But they do. Right, and and, and it's not and it's not. I'm not saying that they should require to have a law degree because to me, like these are again elected positions that should be represented by po that by, should be represented by people. Yeah. And 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 not and and there should be an opportunity to to put somebody in these positions that are not part of the system. Right. Right. And, and you, you can't fix a system. And this is what I was explaining before to somebody is, is that like, you know, even with the even with the sheriff. Right. Um, <clears throat> when when we when we go into the Department of Corrections or, or the Erie County Correctional Facility, um, we have 780 corrections officers or, or, or sheriff's deputies that are working in policing in the jails. Right. So that's 780 and then they're policing 500 to 600 people on average per day. Right now, I think there's 703 people in jail throughout the course of, of both of both facilities. Um, but we're going to talk about that in a minute, too. Yeah. OK. Right. So 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 with that 780 people <clears throat> like layoffs have to be made. Right. Right. And and like you, you, you have to essentially start right sizing that organization to fit the amount of people that are in there because 780 is far too much. And that's just a representation of the uh, uh, the the jobs program 
that they've turned it into. Right. Right. And, and, you know, government has this, this thing where they like to do this all the time, where they never like to cut a budget. A budget always only grows when you're in government. Right. Right. So it always does. <laughs> so a government official is not going to come in looking to cut that budget because right. their, their budget is their power. Right. And that's right. going somewhere. Right. Exactly. And, and, and no police officer, like who, who, who would ever lay themselves off? No one. Right. No one. <laughs> so it's like they're not even talking about those things. And to me, like that, that's part of the fiscal responsibility that comes with being a policymaker in that position. Right. Like we're overspending in, in, in incarceration. We're overspending in incarceration. We are overspending in incarceration. Why is no other candidate even talking about that? It's true. We're spending a hundred million dollars a year. When you when you break the numbers out, it's one hundred and sixty to two hundred thousand dollars per inmate per year. We're spending over seven times the national average when it comes to incarceration here in in, in Buffalo. And it's like six times the national average in New York State. And it's like or uh, New York State is spending six times the national average. I think like the the budget for uh, incarceration in New York is like three point two billion dollars. And here's the here's the kicker, though. What and when you actually go into these prisons and jails, look where this overspending is going. Do you see it? You read the no. reports. You don't see any of it. <laughs> right. It's, well, so it's go. where's the money really going? That's what I want to know. I've spent at least two times in the uh, Holton Center. I beat, it. I, I beat it all. But. I beat it all. <laughs> <laughs> but. Teflon, man. <laughs> don't stick. It was, it was just some BS being young and dumb and. Yeah. Well, right. Quick, long time type of deals. <laughs> but happens. the Holton Center, for, for what you just said, all that money that's that's made. You would think that it would go to, you know, fixing up these facilities. And they don't. It's probably the worst place I've been in. And it's just like, I've actually, Tana Wanda, I went to jail out there before. <laughs> we just learned a lot about you today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, let's make it your episode now. <laughs> How was Tana Wanda? P- PSA. I've been yeah. in Amherst before. Do not How was Tana Wanda? Drive. See, see, I already know where you're going with oh, this. No. Tana Wanda gives people McDonald's food. And- they do. They, they, they yeah, hold you down. They, I guess. The, I, mean, I, I, I mean, it's not the most comfortable experience, but like, it's clean. It's clean. Yeah. The holding center. It's filthy. Filthy, disgusting. Filthy, there's a little bug fl- well, well, uh, running uh, around I've everywhere. I've heard that there's like a big giant rat running through that place. Oh yeah, a few of them. Oh my god. Not just one. <laughs> yeah, and it's just like, <clears throat> like the, the my first time in the holding center, they gave us like a. Uh, like one of those gym mats to lay on. I'm like, you don't get no blankets, no nothing. This mm-hmm. is like if you're in the bullpen. Yeah. Eventually, if you get charged, you actually, they don't release you. And the bullpen has smeared poop on the walls. Oh, yeah. You, all the, you smell the urine when you walk in there. It's disgusting. It's never been painted. Right. Like, you, you literally, like, I, I would burn my damn clothes after I left that place. Yeah, it's nasty. Yeah. Fecal matter goes into the air. <clears throat> like, it's gross. Yeah, it's, it's it, gross. it is yeah. bad, dude. It's bad. It's terrible. So actually. You, you know that there's there's quite a few people actually that have been in the holding center since 2019. I was going through the you know so the 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 sheriff's department produces a report every day um, of the people that have been incarcerated um, in the in the Erie County jails and which facility they're in and uh, there are quite a few people that have been there since 2019 in the actual holding center in the holding center which so and, and to to explain the holding center there's no green right you're in a a monolith building. Right. You don't get rec time. I think rec time has been reduced to like 30 minutes a day. And I don't even think it's outside. Like you're allowed to like uh, you're allowed to, you know, get out and eat and stuff like that. It's on a roof. Yeah. It's, it's on you're a in roof. a cage on a roof right. of, the, so, of downtown. So, yeah, I met in the three so, three years. Since yeah. Two, this is 2019, 18 crazy. months. Yeah. So I do have a I, I did take criminal justice in school, so I do have a degree in it. So, OK, some of it I may have forgotten, but I know the one thing. Anything after a year and a day is you get moved. Right. Well, these are people waiting, 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 waiting. waiting. Right. These are not. These are people well, if you're, waiting. So if you're so in they're court, waiting, they're waiting trial. Yeah. If you're in court, that the, there it goes, it goes, it overrides it. Okay, you're in so court. I'm thinking that after you're already convicted. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah after either. anything over a year, you're supposed to get sent upstate. Yeah. Right. And that, that's how it's supposed to go. Right. Yeah. So, so, so people that's been waiting. So you get people that have been picked up on probation and parole violations. So this is Cortez Foster, right? This is you remember Cortez Foster? I'm, I've been known Cortez. Since right. Cortez. So he was he, he was picked up on a on a uh, on a violation, probation, parole violation, yep. right? And and uh, he wasn't at, he wasn't at the holding center. They sent him out to uh, Alden. So he was at the holding center for a while. Then they sent him out to Alden, and I think he was there for over twelve months uh, and never saw a judge. Right. Right. And that that's and 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 or or saw the parole board or the probation board or I'm not exactly wow. sure who who who, who does 
the decisioning in those. Um, but we have those same instances going on now at the at the Erie County. Another, another incident. Right, and it's it's not just one though. It's it, there's like several people that have been in there, 2019 plus, and um, they see their future is like is doom. It's right. Either, I'm either going to go upstate or I'm going to sit here, and so, they, they can't see past that. That's and too and, far and for upstate them. is a palace compared to the holding center. Pretty much, it is yeah. a pa- so yeah. you're they're, like what they're living in is is entire squalor for years. Yeah, for years, right? And then that's that's being held, and it's like it, I couldn't imagine like walking through those you know those those halls you know for a couple of days or weeks, and I think that that's kind of what the intention of the holding center was. You know what I mean? But you have people that have been wandering those halls now or, or in their cells now for uh, you know years. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Some people got three, four years just during in their court, still going to court. Yeah. I mean that that's I've seen that happen a few times. So I wonder how years. This will, you're right. How this will work? Because um, I just thought about this. So say somebody, uh, okay, probation, parole, violation, and they got sent back to the holding center. Yep. So say if they maybe had like nine months left and they've been in there over. I'll tell you what. My situation. I was 21, 2011. Um, I was on felony probation for five years for a drug charge. And I was three, I was like almost four years into it, violated, was, I, like you said, I waited and waited to see a judge for months, probably six months, to, almost nine months total after getting sentenced to my one and one, three to four years, one and a third to four years with my sentence for the, for the probation violation. But I waited six months to, for court getting the, I remember there, there would send me to court. I thought I had court in a week. They would send me downtown, and then they'd say, "Oh, your judge isn't here next next week." And they would just keep doing that for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks, and weeks, and weeks until six months goes by. And they're like, "Okay, one in the third, four years. Here you go, boom, boom, go up." St- three months later, I'm upstate, and it was just like that. That that whole that whole entire nine months could have been two weeks, but I had to do that nine months for no reason at all, mm-hmm. and then sit in those conditions for nine months. <clears throat> and then I did the other half of my bid. Half of my bid was in county. Half of it was upstate. How does that make any sense? Right. Out of eighteen months, so they at least gave you time served, right? No, I had, I I had, went upstate for that. Wow, so not even time. So that's what, but that's that wow. that's that's for probation violations and parole violators. That's what they had. To, he was even just saying that, and I can contest that it actually happened to me. Yep. That's... And now now COVID is delaying that for everyone, right? And, and now that, it's <laughs> even worse. Yeah, it, now it's worse. That's why you're talking about 18, 20 that. months that they've oh, been God. sitting in that holding center, that's, right? On that that same two hell. inch mat. That's on, hell. On, on yeah, exactly. Yeah, not knowing if you're going to catch COVID that day. Because you're, because the the uh they the way they move people around from holding fish the fish tank the the bullpen the this that and the third every two days you're getting moved around to a different bed that's someone who was just laying on six hours right. ago. And I mean the the average person is in 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 the holding center for two days, right? So it's like you know if if you're in there for eighteen months, you imagine how many how much traffic you're seeing coming through there. Crazy, right? And, and crazy. It, within a pandemic, you know, and, and we're in a pandemic, right? And it's yeah. like it's like just they what do you do there? And they're not. They don't. It's like they don't even care. Right. And it's and it's crazy. I got I got a family member that works in the prisons, and they they got COVID through the prisons. Yeah. So we do have to give them some some credit, I suppose, because there is like a pre release program that that is being held at the uh, at the holding center that has reduced the recidivism rate greatly. Yeah. Um. Uh. And it's just you know it's a, a sign that you know actually working with with inmates, oh, yeah. you know, and 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 people that have been incarcerated can can truly uh, transform uh, a situation, right? So I think it's like Catholic Charities um, and another and we need to build on that. another local organization are, are offering pre-release services, which are connecting people to social services when they get out of jail. Which is what um, we need. Which is what we need, right? Yeah. But but what they're currently doing, right? Because we're, we're running these two facilities now. And, and even with, you know, you, how you're explaining, you know, you're, you're waiting six, nine months to uh, on pro- probation, parole violation. You know, the, these things... They do this to keep the numbers up. Yeah. Right? They they keep the numbers oh, up. Oh, yeah. They, right? they knew from day one that I was doing a one and third to four. Exactly. That did not change from day exactly. one to six months. But they wanted to keep you in county. But they kept me there. So that they can have people, so you can have the numbers there. Right. And, and they can have an, a justification for having those deputies, right. you know what I mean, working. Right. right? And, and, that, and the a, county funding goes to them. It is a numbers game yeah. for them because they don't want to cut that budget. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and the then, budget, because right. they need a certain X amount of dollars to pay for my whatever, X 
Right. So, so, so this, this pre-release program me is sitting there, help them that this pre-release program is, the, is now their reason for keeping open the, uh, the, uh, the downtown holding center, right? Because this, I, I sat on the, on the, on the budget hearing, um, and, and the budget hearing that the sheriff didn't actually even attend his deputy sheriff attended that, which, you know, is kind of like a slap in the face of the legislator, I think, because that's the most important part, you know, is, is finding out, you know, how your money's going to be spent or, or explaining how your money's being spent. So the, the under sheriff says, uh, we're, we have a plan. Right, and I'm telling you, there's a hundred million dollars a year is what we're spending on incarceration. We're running two facilities, and typically we have 600 or less people in those facilities. Right? They have a plan now to keep both facilities open. Right? right? And it's just a continued drain of 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 of, of county uh, uh, resources and, and, and tax dollars. Right? And almost like incentivize them to keep them both full too. And that's the if incentivize had, to keep them full. Yeah. And if you only had one of those buildings running, and the other one is like a maybe a, I don't know a rehabilitation center or something, switch it up, do something different with it. Right. Now all of a sudden you're only incentivized to keep. The only the worst people who really need to be out taken out of society, people who are raping people, killing people, those are the people you gotta be really saving all those those spots for. Not just random people that got caught with a dime in their pocket. They shouldn't be going to jail at all. Right. Right. You right. know what I'm saying? That's the problem too, is like that that we're incentivized those beds to be filled up. So that means anybody and anybody that did anything could go to jail now. Right. So like you said something important and like that that's part of the platform as well is is, is like the decriminalization of, of 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 minor drug offenses. You know what I mean? And and, and this common is, sense. Common sense. Like come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> like you know, sending somebody to jail is not going to stop them from doing drugs. We no. know that. Yeah. Right. It's not and, 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 and in most instances you're you're making their situation worse, which is going to intensify their addiction. Yep. Give right? them more because trauma. When, they, when you go to they, jail, you lose. You lose, you lose, you lose, right? So right. when you go to jail, you lose your job. You lose your house, your you family, lose your kids. So, you lose everything. Nope. So, <laughs> my instructor said it best: people go to jail and normally come out better criminals. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Especially when you do your state time and you, you get affiliated up there. It's That's like, it. It's you can't get a job. Comes you can't, to life. You can't do shit. And it's just like the only thing you have to do is like survive. So, you gonna do it by any means, right? So, um, with that being said, like, what exactly are your plans if elected? Yeah. I got a few plans. So the, the, the platform is, is evolving. Um, and, and I, I, I plan to have updates We're we're going through petitioning right now. Um, so, and just to give you guys, I explained a little bit in the beginning, but like petitioning is, is we have to go around and collect signatures to get on the ballot so we can participate in the democratic primary. Right. Um, we, we live in Erie County in order to participate in the democratic primary in Erie County. I think it's 600 signatures we need. Um, however, the democratic machine is going to make every attempt to keep us off the ballot. So they're going to try and scratch off every signature, throw off every petition sheet that they can, um, uh, so that we can reduce our numbers. So we have to get about, you know, I'm estimating we need about 3000 signatures um and and this is the last week of petitioning so i think we're coming close to our goal we have uh, quite a few people throughout the county working on that so like that's been my primary focus for the past two weeks now is making sure that we have a game plan to get these signatures in so that we can make sure that we're on the primary or on the ballot because like you said we have a good shot at winning yeah we're we're, we're the candidate with the most name recognition yep right we're the candidate with the only platform most right? intriguing candidate the best looking the whole thing <laughs> like it's like so we got everything covered <laughs> I'm just yeah, like, it's like, <laughs> real though. it is true <laughs> But it's crazy right. because it's like they trying so hard to stop you right. because they know, like, because I'm they know like, we come in. You know what's crazy though? Right. You know what's crazy to me is you hear everybody say when it comes to politics is how much change we need, how much the status quo is not working, and everybody always wants to complain and talk about how we need to change this, that, and the third, what they would do if they, would. but it's right here, right? Like you have your option right here. Yeah. Well, I mean, and that, that's that's and the everybody, thing. everybody's afraid to, to go against the norm and. And be a different. Oh, there's no chance if I vote that way. No, there is a chance if you vote that way. If everyone did it, we'd win. Right. Exactly. Right. Well, people are people fear something new, and 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 you know the the biggest hurdle. And uh, okay, so so the platform is going to be evolving, uh, and you want to know about uh, like stances on on some of the issues that we're going. So yeah. immediately, uh, right is. Uh, Carriel's law is going to be implemented throughout the sheriff's department. So, Carriel, your mom, right? Mm-hmm. Police officer did the right thing in 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 a time where where somebody was potentially being killed. Yeah. Right? She she stopped police brutality in its tracks. Um, she herself was assaulted. She lost her job, stripped of her pension. Um, you know, humiliated in the community by the mayor and other elected officials. All types of stuff, right? And for the longest time, uh, vilified. It's still people to this day, even after Greg Vilikowski stated, "I'm gonna take the shades off for this one." 
Gregory Kwiatkowski stated my mom never jumped on his back, yet that's still the same story that people run with to this day. Wow. Even after his public knowledge in the public hearing that he stated my mom did not jump on his back, people still believe that bullshit. Wow. So it's like, Cario's Law, like I say, I'm not against all cops. I'm against the bad cops. I won't completely say fuck the police. I'll say fuck the bad police. <laughs> but at the end of the day, when you lost, when my mom lost, it's pretty hard to do the right thing when you have to look at, when you have that that loss, that big ass L to look forward to. And I won't want nobody to go through what my mom went through. Right. Lost everything. Lost everything. But it wasn't it struggling. wasn't sacrifice. And then the that crazy made... thing is, is when we talk about Carol's law and when I go explain to people what Carol's law is, like, oh, that's not a thing? That's common sense. Yeah. Like, and it's, yeah. It, it's common yeah. sense. Police officers don't have to stop police from doing the wrong thing. Yeah, you think. No, that, they don't. You almost think that was already in effect, but it wasn't. You like that to me, and, and so so every single person I've ever talked to about Carol's law has always supported one hundred percent. The only person I've ever heard of not supporting it is Mayor Byron Brown. Wow, <laughs> he's the only person I've never heard of not I supporting it. Who signed it? In a, uh, because he's in the pocket of the of the of the police union. You know, he signed it, but he didn't sign it in, in its fullness, right? So it's like they don't they don't there there's no um there's no record keeping. Yeah, he's part of that sta- right. So so they they gave a water down, and he he even tried to fight the fact that it's Carroll's law, and just said, oh, we already have the duty to intervene, saying that the police officers are required to intervene already. Um, but ah. it's not right. That, so so that, that defeats the whole purpose of what the you know what I'm saying, right? What the law is trying to do. So so we got Carol's law that that's that's one of our day one uh, uh, policies that's going to be implemented, um, and it's going to be for uh, uh, um, the the patrol unit and also for the uh, the corrections as well, right? So those those corrections officers um, or, or or deputies that are working in the jail, right? The ones that are sleeping on the job now, the ones that are not sleeping on the job can come forward and say, hey, those guys are sleeping on the job. We need to do something about this, and they won't have any retaliation, right? Now those ones that are not beating and assaulting and raping people, they can come forward and say, hey, those guys are beating and assaulting and raping people and not have any retribution towards them. Right. You know what I mean? Because that that's that's what they're the issue that they're facing now because I read through the uh um I read through the uh, the task force report for the Erie County Sheriff's Department, right? Um, and this is for the changes that are supposed to be made. And like uh, I was reading through some of the patrol unit, and and police officers in a sheriff's patrol unit do not feel comfortable coming forward and 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 uh, uh, yeah. reporting misconduct. Yep, it's in the numbers. Like, yeah, and it's like, like it's, it's cause surveyed. Of the culture, like, the culture yeah. kind of makes it where it's like you are shunned if you speak out against your fellow. Whatever. So to it's me, like, Carrio's law is necessary. Yeah, 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 yeah. Especially, like, especially if you want to have any type of good. View yeah, it helps. and reputation. It, it's a tool for, your... for it's a tool for good cops. Yeah, it yeah. really is. It's like the cops. They say uh, they they try to tell the street stop snitching. Take your own advice. That's take your own advice. Yeah. Well, y'all, y'all <laughs> they actually, already did. Actually they not take snitching on each other. <laughs> they actually take your own advice. <laughs> start, let me start snitching. No, right, they want no, they want the streets to start no, snitching. They need to start snitching. That's what I'm saying. It's funny because it makes them hypocrites. Is that they are the first ones to attack the don't the not stop snitching. Uh, c- concept, but they're the ones that actually are living that culture. Gang, gang. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. A, yeah so just, just another so gang. Carriel's law, day one, uh, halt solitary confinement. So solitary confinement is a violation That's of the Eighth Amendment of the Constitution. That's huge. Uh, right, it's cruel and unusual punishment. Yeah, the co- right wingers, constitutionalists, should be all behind that. Right, because that's we're talking about our freedoms here. We're talking about men- people going mentally insane for being sitting in a in a room, staring at a wall for ninety days, or some people years and you know the irony and all years that? in the box we got another one for the constitutionalists too but <laughs> we uh we, we in covid right now right some people can't stay in the house for a fucking day and you got tv internet everything that you could possibly want in your house imagine staying in the room without shit right for 90 days people lose their mind staying in their own house because covid yeah don't want to allow them to go out to eat go out to bars and stuff like that that's traumatic so it's like so if you have something so if you bitching about that yeah. How can you say anything about somebody being locked in four walls for 30 right. or 90 days or something like that? Well, yeah. and, and here's the thing is like, so when I when I say this, people say, oh, what about safety, though? Because a lot of times uh, they say that um, that solitary confinement is used for safety. You know what I mean? To separate the bad guy or the bad the bad person and, and get them out of that situation. Right, or, which is not being or, used or, that Or way. even someone who's being attacked by, by multiple people to separate them and, 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 and bring them out of that situation. So, you know, a couple things is like that. that's, you know, we're still relying on that same insidious culture, right, with that statement, right? We're going to change the culture of the jails, right? So so we're, we're not going to be in the same situation where people are just laying around doing nothing all day long. Yeah, we right? need to reform these people. 5 a.m., you're getting up, you're eating breakfast, you're hey, going I'm to with school, you're, you're, you're getting jobs training, right? You're I'm cleaning up, you're, you're 
I'm with that. That's yeah. what my kids do. Yeah. You know what I mean? And 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 these are people like and not not in all cases, but a lot of cases is like when you when you have somebody that's like, you know, experiencing or 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 that that commits crime or or all types of things is like a lot of times they didn't have that structure growing up. They didn't have like the parents showing them how to do things, right? So so part of reforming the person is actually giving them that structure. Right? right. Like my brother was in jail for 10 years. Like he he got out. He he cannot go to work. He does he's not institutionalized. Right. He's like he like he I can, he, he I can, cannot go to work. Yeah, no, I understand exactly where he's coming from. When you're institutionalized for that long and you're used to the same thing every day and not really being like when you get out, it's a shock. You can't do things. Like you it's just it's just you can't do it. We, we should not be cutting them off from society. We should be preparing them for society. Exactly. So that that that's the that that's the thing. So so we're gonna change the actual culture. We're gonna halt solitary confinement, and obviously we're going to be smart about it. If there's an inmate that is or a, a person, an individual that is that is that is causing issues, that is that that's life is in harm harm's way. Like we will make an intelligent decision and separate that person from a group case by case. Case by case. Like I don't understand like why like so like I don't understand like why that can't be a common sense. Oh, so you're not going to be able to separate people? No, we will separate people if we need to. If there's violence occurring, we bring that people out of the situation of violence and we remove them from that situation, right? Right. But we're not locking them in a room for three to four months at a time, you know, changing their diet, not allowing them visitation, stripping them of their phone rights. Medication. Like, you know, all, the, all of that yeah. stuff, that's the torture. Right. You know what I mean? You can literally separate somebody, put them in a room with a counselor, get them diffused, you know, and, and, and change their mindset in a few hours. Yeah, you can right. do that in a few hours. You take somebody out of a certain environment and put them in a um, healthier environment. Within an hour, you can change people's mindset and yeah. change people's moods, and that's a real. That's something. With my 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 five year olds walking around the house screaming and yelling this morning because I said he couldn't do something, and like, and it, I didn't even say so. It was my my mom said he couldn't do something, right? So yeah. I just grabbed him and hugged him and took him out of the environment and showed him something different for a few minutes. And, and then he's, he was fine. Magic. Take him right back. And not to say that prisoners are kids and that's how it's going to be a respond every time. But like, you've got to be willing to try different things to change. Like, because the solitary confinement is not the working. the human aspect of it. The solitary yeah. confinement is not working. Right. It's not, it's not treating people like cattle. Right. Like, bring the sheep in, out of this room into this room. I'm going to finish with um, Humans. Uh, that's yeah. it. That's all. Yeah. And I, and I think one of the biggest things... Especially with a job like this, it, it's going to take an intense amount of, of understanding, especially like with mental health issues, because with COVID, you know, I, I say this all the time with COVID, there is a lot of mental health people, a lot of mental health issues being like, you know, created, I'm going to say created. Y'all, I think we all suffer from mental health, but yeah, it's it's more up front now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. We, we deal with depression on a higher level now than we did a year ago. Because yeah. We just the way the world home. is. So with that confined, being confined to your home because you're afraid and, you know, especially when that paranoia kicks in that you might go outside and catch COVID or something like that. They said, they said quarantine. I said, who the hell's on quarantine? I got to get out of this house. Like, I, <laughs> I don't, I don't understand. I will wear a mask. I will sanitize. You tell me what to do. Right. I cannot sit inside all day long. Yeah. Exactly. Like I then, but that's just my nature. Yeah. Like my kids, my, my kids at eight o'clock in the morning, they're busting to get out the door. Yeah, especially kids. Kids are all kids. All have to like, get out the house. And right. Do, that's just the way a, a child is. So it's like wired. you're already in prison or jail or whatever. Already confined. Already confined. <laughs> now let's so take it. <laughs> imagine you get used to you know walking to ch- walking to the child hall, you know walking to your pot, whatever, and then some shit happen. You and somebody get into a shot with match and they separate y'all, throw you on solitary, and then it's just like and then throw out all your commissary too. Yeah. Or actually open up your locker and let people just have at it. Because that's so, what happens. They just like because when you go in, when you go into solitary, then you lose all your stuff. Like yeah. everything's gone. So everything. Then it's just like just like yeah. when you go to jail. You, it's like, you know it's, what's it's so crazy is in Erie County the the way the Erie County jail is set up is you're supposed to your property is supposed to be yours until you leave. No one's allowed to touch it. But I've seen it with my own eyes, maybe ten times at least, where somebody gets something happens, they get into a fight or something, they get sent to the box, and the CO will take their bin with all their books that their family bought for them, magazines, food, you name it, radio, and then the the porter takes it and does what they d- divvies it up however they want. It, they literally take it from you, mm-hmm. and then it's your word against the jail's word on what you owned. You, mm-hmm. Oh, you don't have a receipt? Oh, the receipt was in the bin that got stolen. Sorry, <laughs> what are you? Where are you gonna put your receipt in your pocket? There's no pockets. You don't have a pocket. <laughs> That's it. It's it's your word versus the jails, and you lose every time. 
No matter yeah. what. It, it happened it, to me. It, it, it's so much your word against the jails is that uh, Cortez Foster, he, 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 he wrote a complaint to the jail that his constitutional rights were being violated yeah. because of COVID-19, right? It was the it was uh, it was the chief of the jail that responded to his yep. to his letter. It didn't go to any outside well, agency. It didn't go to like any you know. Uh, the, uh, the two times I got let out from Erie County Holding Center. Wow. Uh, one one of the times I, I went in with medication, that script disappeared, gone, got thrown out. They don't know what happened to it. Sorry, what medication? What are you talking about? You have a receipt for it? Oh no, sorry. Second time, seventy dollars. Was in, that was all I had? Seventy dollars. What's $70? What are you talking about? We don't have $70 here. Do you have a receipt for it? Yeah, I have walk around with a receipt that says I have $70 on me. Well, we don't have any proof. Do you have any proof? Nope. Sorry. Bye. I'm sure this, I'm sure the same story has happened millions of times, mm -hmm. but you can't, there's no one to report on it because there's, like I said, there's no paper trail. It's the inmate, it's the inmate's word versus the jails. The jail always has the credibility over the inmate. The inmate's an inmate. He's a, he's a criminal. How can we trust this person, right? Not all the time. So, Not in Erie County. That's what I'm saying. That's, that's, <laughs> right. that's their mindset. Innocent until proven guilty. And we always fall into this trap of, of oh my God, who cares? It's it's an inmate. And that, that's that's what we right. that's what we run into. And it's like, well, well no. Well, it, that's, another th that's another thing. It's like somebody somebody dies in the holding center. It just happened, what, last week? Saturday, Saturday you said? Saturday. Saturday. And the first thing people want to ask is, well, what was he? why was he in the holding center? What did he do? It doesn't matter. Right. Why is that your first? Your right. first question is that, out of all things? Right. Right, it, it doesn't Instead matter. Instead of being like, "How did he die?" What, 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 <laughs> then, what, that, that, that's what that's happened? that's the issue, and it, and it's like uh, his name is Mikey Freer, and and he died on Saturday. They they came and they found him in a cell. Um, uh, this is based on the report that was released so far. He was found unresponsive in a cell. Um, they tried to deploy a defibrillator on him, you know, and um, and he didn't. There was no response to that, and uh, he was pronounced dead. Damn. Right. Um, so in 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 the county jails, this makes thirty six, I believe, in total. If if we're looking at just the Erie County Holding Center, this is thirty one at the Holding Center. Um, and you know, immediately, uh, you know, the I was reading an article that that Sheriff Howard um, is launching an investigation into now this death, right? And and we we know that he's got a track record of not properly investigating, right. of, of withholding information. Of, he takes control of the process so and then to control the narrative. Right. It's, on, it's on paper, but right? It's not. Okay, we we doing an investigation, but he probably just saying that just to kind of clean it up, clean it up. Right, right. Maybe so he might write it on paper, but then it becomes unbounded or something like that. He died of natural causes, some dumb shit. So I I, call, I called April Baskin this morning, or or, or last night. I called April Baskin's office, um, and they got back to me this morning because um, I'm like, what what's going on here, right? Because I actually spent the time. Uh, we tracked down the family. Uh, we found the brother of 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 the person who's di who's died. He was engaged. Um, he has a daughter. Um, he's like 26, 27 years old. Uh, five foot eleven, two hundred and ten pounds. Five five foot eleven, like literally my my build, my size. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and I'm 31, and I I'm I'm healthy. Like I don't I don't have breathing problems. I don't have asthma, none of that stuff. Didn't have any pre-existing conditions. Right. He he got arrested two days prior. Um, and they, and I think he was in, in, in Charlie unit and they, they, they found him, uh, dead and unresponsive. So it's like, there, there's a huge question mark as to like, what the hell happened here? Right. right. And you got a, a family that's completely distraught. Right. Wow. So, you know, I, I talked to them yesterday and like, you know, the, the, the first thing that, that we're talking about is that they, they don't know what's going on. Wow. You know what I mean? Because, because they kind of bring everything in circle, right. They want to, uh, they want to develop a narrative. They want to, you know, decide what they're going to release, what the information, what videos. Right. It's very, all, very filtered. Right, right. Very they, filtered. They, we, we, we have to stop that, right? So, the, yeah. like, the, the, and, and this is, this is the thing. The curtain we, has to open up. Right, right. So, we have to focus on security, right? And, and the security as a whole, right? So, we need the, the facility, like, we need the, the people that are incarcerated to be secure, and, and we need the, the deputies to be secure, right? Like, we, we need to have security as a whole, right? And then, right. then we need to focus on transparency, right? Transparency. So, when something goes wrong, that there's transparent process so that people... People you, know you, what happened. You have a loved one in jail. You want to know what's going on. That is the most frustrating thing. My brother has been jumped in jail before. I've had to call and 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 track him down in the medical unit. Nobody wants to give you a call back. Nobody wants to provide any responses. Nobody wants to tell you what's going on. But you know what? I mean? It's it's just and you just wait until he's able to make a phone call to you. Wow. In three or four days, and it's like, oh, this will happen, blah, blah blah blah. And it's like, and you and you've heard it from somebody else that he got the number from that said, oh, call my brother. You know what I mean? And it's. No deputies calling you to tell you your brother just got jumped and he's in the and he's in the uh, 
in the unit and it would have fractured spine. Right. You know what I mean? Like nobody, no deputies calling to tell you that. You have to hear it third hand from someone else. So we need transparency in the right. jails, right? And and then the other the other piece is accountability, right? So we need security, transparency, accountability, and the accountability really comes in is like when we know something is wrong. Yeah. Now we can actually hold those people responsible, right? Yeah, and and exactly. the sheriff, right? The police commissioner, they have the ability to discipline their employees. They can fire them. It is written into the charter of the county and it's written to the charter of the city, right? And no contract can supersede that, right? So the sheriff can exercise accountability unilaterally, right? The sheriff can fire an employee by himself without consulting the union, Right. And that's the type of that's the type of action that we need to take is 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 when somebody's uh, uh, abusing, raping, murdering. Why? Why are we still paying them? Right. You, OK, maybe you haven't prosecuted them. Right. Right. Why are we still paying them? Yeah. yeah. Why are we putting other lives at risk? Why are we opening ourselves up for more embarrassment? Right. Like it, like yeah. to me, it's like you spend so much time trying to cover this shit up. Why don't you just fire the person? Yeah. It's important to put more energy in covering things up than it would be just to get rid of the person. Right. So 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 there there's no line of communication for them. They 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 really need to know what's going on. And and at the end of the day, they they have major concerns. They their their healthy brother was arrested and on Saturday morning he was dead. Yeah. Right? There's just like Sandra Bland. That's crazy. Yeah. Just like Sandra Bland. It's wild. Yes. There's a lot of reform needed in these prisons and yeah. these jails, man. In this Yes. In a minute. All right. Go sit down. Couple minutes. We're almost done. All right. It is almost an hour. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you want to sit, um, anything else you want to say before? I mean, basically what we're getting at is like this, the, the, our, the way we have our Erie County Sheriff's Department needs reform right now. Right. Right now. And, and, and there's an election, it's election season. So wake up, go out and vote. Um, anything well, else the, you want to. The third part, right. Cause we, we talk about Carroll's law. We talk about halt sol solitary confinement and then we're going to talk about drugs a little bit too. Cause that, yeah, that yeah. was we'll, what prompted on that. it. Yeah. Let's that's what prompted that. it. Right. Yeah. So, so, um, you know, first thing is under the miles Carter sheriff's administration, marijuana is 100% deprioritized. Right. So that means that if uh, a sheriff's deputy pulls you over, right. They, they, they smell marijuana in your car, right. They're not searching you. Right. Right. It's Even just, if they see the marijuana in your car, they're not searching you. It's like, right. That's that's not a priority for us. Right. Right. You're not being arrested Thank for possession you. of marijuana. You're not being fined for possession of marijuana. You're not being searched for marijuana. And you know what? If you have it on you, it's not being taken from you. No. Shouldn't right? be. Exactly. Should be just legal. Right. And 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 that one's a no limit policy. All right. Because like honestly, at the end of the day, like marijuana has never you've never overdosed on marijuana yeah more people are taking alcohol should be more of a of a problem right than so marijuana. We're, we're, we're not putting All limits day. on it i'm sorry if if you're pulled over by a sheriff's deputy and you have 10 ounces of marijuana in your car we're not taking a single ounce right right let's let's open we, up the market we, so we, instead we of moving yeah and, open and, up the market and make it make it legal and let's have re like a real and a, a, and real, a huge part of this is is like and even, capitalists should love this idea it should be all for it Open up your own marijuana business. Sell it. Like, it should be legal. It, it, well, it definitely shouldn't <laughs> be coming through the New York State. Right. <laughs> like, the New York State should not be controlling it because we see, like, w what's going on? Right. Our it's gas all has ridiculous taxes. Right. Right. You have to pay a ridiculous fee to even get the damn marijuana card. Right. And on top of that, once you start buying it at the store, it's no longer $10 for a gram of it. You're spending $30 That's for a gram of it. And if it's, we, it's if becoming... We open up the market to the privatized sector and not right. just not just the state, not exactly. just medical. Exactly. And all of a sudden, everyone has to compete. Prices drop. This is just economics 101 right here. Right. Prices will drop. Marijuana will become so cheap because everybody and their mother is going to want to sell it and make some money and start a business. So I'm not necessarily doing it to drive economics of it. What no, I'm doing know, is, is to fix the problem of mass incarceration right. that's associated with it because that's a problem. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Is, is that they were locking people up for something that everybody, not everybody, but that, that, that that's, that's used at such a high Everyone rate. Everyone knows somebody. At and, least. And, and, right. and, and the individuals that are being, or the group of people that are being locked up at a higher rate for it are not using it as a, at a higher rate. Right. Right. And, and that's the problem. So it's that's criminal. Common sense. Yeah. That, that's criminal. A criminal attack on black and brown communities. We're going to end it, right? right? And the sheriff, the yeah. sheriff's department doesn't have the ability to do that through every municipality in Erie County, right? But the sheriff's department has the ability to set the tone of how it's going to be done, and then and then the other municipalities that have police forces can follow suit, right? Unfortunately, it's not like you know, it, it, not unfortunately, but it, it would be for like the places that don't have a police department, like Clarence, Grand Island, you know, and you could list off a few other ones. But it's you know, it it, it starts the conversation and, and it opens up for 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 real change in Erie right. County. Um, and then as far as these hard drugs go, we need more rehabilitation and not criminalization. Right. Well, people, I, I'm, people, I'm for decriminalizing uh, low level possession. Right. Yeah. So, so like, uh, like 
at the end of the day, like if 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 you're using heroin, if you're using crack, if you're using cocaine, and and you're and you're pulled over, and you have a a a a, a consumer amount, right? A consumer amount. Like th- this is not the time to take people to jail. No, right, not right the, the, now. This is this is not this is time the, to get people out of jail. Right, and and then the we should not be arresting people for addiction. Yeah. That it just doesn't make any sense. And again, this is the, the this is this is the the piece of it that's like okay, we're trying to drive the numbers, right? So every little thing that we can find to put somebody in jail for is going to drive the numbers. And it's like okay, so you know, whereas like we have bail reform, right? So bail reform says that people with low level possession aren't like for nonviolent uh, for nonviolent uh, um, nonviolent things, you're not staying in jail waiting for uh, waiting to see your judge. Mm-hmm. Right, your your bail reform is saying no bail, just go. Here's your appearance ticket, right? But it still keeps the revolving door open because now in, instead of staying there, it's just like an open processing center. They arrest them, they bring them in, they take them down to central booking, they they keep them for a couple hours and they release them, right? So they're not losing out on that business, right? They're still, still they're, they're, they're they're still getting that flow, still a constant they're, flow. They're still getting yeah. that flow, right? So so we got to cut that flow off because that that that's the actual financial component for them. That's right? the driving factor. That's the driving factor, yeah. right? And 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 we we decriminalize these possession amounts, and and that's going to cut off so many people that are being funneled into the system, right? We're going to save so much in taxes, and we're going to actually be able to start rehabilitating people uh, uh, properly because. Uh, nine times out of ten, like when when people are on, on methadone, suboxone, these other uh, uh, rehabilitative drugs, right, that that allow them to detox safely from yeah. you know these harsh chemical street drugs that they're doing. Yeah. Um, if those aren't available, you know, to them in jail, right, uh, then when they get out, they have a uh, uh, they 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 nine times out of ten are, are relapsing, and, and a lot going, of them dying, and and going to find those drugs, and a lot of them overdosing and dying right away because they're they just right. spent three days out off of it. Yes, and then boom, they can't hit. Like that's another aspect. It's yes, it, it, this this is like a this this branches out into all aspects of life. Mm-hmm. Is this little one topic of decriminalization? Mm-hmm. Like because the right now the market for drugs is the black market, which is where the gangs are, which is where all these murders are coming from. So it's like we can stop a lot of problems just by one solution: decriminalizing um, nonviolent offenses. You know what's so messed up though? Being humans, treating people like humans. This, and this is something like I, I feel like is it, life. If it makes sense, it's wrong. <laughs> yeah. If it makes sense, it's wrong. People don't want things to make sense. Like co- the more complication, the better it is because it's just we don't really have to think for ourselves. We could just kind of tell people. People could just kind of tell us how to think with it. Right. And I, I think that's how it is. So. All right. So day one, Carroll's law. Uh, halt solitary confinement and and deprioritization of marijuana. So those those are the day ones, and and the the platform is developing. There's going to be more in there, um, and and we're definitely going to uh, deprioritize, decriminalize, uh, however you want to uh, say it, uh, low level uh, or low possession amounts of of essentially all drugs, um, so that we're not arresting addicts and putting them in funneling them through our system. We are gonna cap things off with Miles right now. Um, Miles has a, he he has a hell of a lot of uh, good ideas, great ideas. That can uh, help with this whole reform thing as far as the jails and everything in Erie County. But, um, you know, we talked about a lot in the hour. We're going to definitely support Miles. Uh, When are the primaries? June 22nd. June 22nd, 2021. Get out there. Register to vote if you're not registered already. Register as a Democrat before May 22nd. May 22nd. Yes. Yep. So June 20. That's right. huge too. We gotta we gotta start pushing that more too. Right. So so in in Erie County, uh, it, it's anybody's race on a county level because it is a a pretty decent split between Democrats and Republicans, right? So yeah. um, you know, this primary is not like the city of Buffalo. Primary doesn't determine the election. So this is just fight. Well, petitioning is fight one. Primary is fight two, and then fight three is going to be the general election. And and we have to keep the energy and go all the way through. It, um, but we need as many registered voters in the Democratic primary uh, by June 22nd so we can make sure we win that. And then after that, I really don't care what party you register for as long as you vote for Miles Carter because we're the only platform that's really standing on change for the community. Yeah, man. Thanks for coming on, man. It was really fucking just, it's just great. We got to keep doing this on a regular basis yeah. and just keep pushing this, you know, what, what we're, we're trying to do here. Right. This is this is bipartisan to me. You're a bipartisan candidate. Like, you're, you're all, you this should be the change party, like the. The the, the progressive party, <laughs> right? Like, forget Democrat Republican yeah, for a minute. Say, We're like, actually I, trying to make solutions in I this hate, room right now. I absolutely hate the whole two party system. Everybody that's, does. Yeah, everyone does. Everybody just, does. I'm. Yeah. On, why the hell do we still have it? Yep. Exactly. So <laughs> we we need more progressive thinkers and like whatever you are, no matter how your views are. If you're more progressive, I could rock with you because 
at the end of the day, if we could sit down and have a conversation and bounce each other's like bounce ideas off each other's head, then that's that's cool. That's what's gonna we happen. More that's that, what needs to happen. We need more of that, especially because we're all young. We don't need nobody. Now, like I said, I'm with term limits with a lot of things. And I will also say, like, we don't need people, we don't need no baby baby boomer generation trying to make decisions for us. Yeah. We need people like It's time to take matters in our own hands. And uh, even Dominique Calhoun, we need people like her. That's right. Shout out to Dominique Calhoun. Well, I mean, the the age has the experience, right? And that experience should be helping to foster the younger generation that has the energy and the ideas that that are going to that are going to carry us through so the yeah, next generation that, you know say, more the younger more the older generation it, it should be a collaboration they, they yeah. like the, the the older generation should be providing the platform for the younger generation that that yeah. is about the right thing you know right. what i mean like like it, it's ridiculous like i understand that you guys only spent three thousand dollars to go to college you know what i mean like i understand that college only cost y'all three thousand dollars well I spent sixty thousand dollars to go to college, so you know what? Oh, that's a semester. Erase my damn student loans and let's stop talking about this, right? right? But the right. boomers aren't ready to have that conversation. No, not yet. Yep. Because they don't have student loans, right? right. <laughs> so so it's like, yeah, we we need you guys to help elevate our voices, give us the platform, so we can get real change yeah. done. Same page, same same goal. Just you know, come together, have a conversation, understanding. Understanding is huge. Yep. So we need everybody to kind of figure that out, but. May 22nd, last day you can register to vote as a Democrat, which Miles need for the primary, which is prim- June, June 22nd. Yeah. June 22nd. So, hey, let's get this man in office. And, you know, it's your boy Nerd Boy D. We out. Got Neil, got Miles. And, hey, appreciate support you guys. My boy Steve Johnson, Matty Ross, M A T T I R O U S E dot com. And hit up Matty Ross page on Facebook. And hit up Steve Johnson on Facebook for your Matty Ross gear. Until then, it's your boy Nerd Boy D, Miles Carter, Neil Set Black. Tonight, it looks like we have one of our first challengers for Erie County Sheriff, community activist Miles Carter. He was the man tackled by police during an interview about protests on Bailey Avenue last June. Carter has no law enforcement experience, but said in a news release that he believes the way things are being done today are not working and that he believes traditional law enforcement does not have the critical lens to make meaningful change. Erie County Sheriff Tim Howard will not be running for re-election. He plans to run for Wales Town Supervisor. Also running for public office is community activist Dominique Calhoun, who made her announcement alongside Carter today. She's running for a seat on the Erie County Legislature. Because they promote violence. The way they promote violence is by covering it up. We know which police officers perpetuate violence in our communities. Dominique Calhoun is going to speak out. Officer Mullen assaulted her. He's a police officer in our community. $110,000 last year. He was in the town of Clarence.